Hello, my name is Stephen Redman and welcome to another episode of Pastor's Library. This is the channel where we talk about theology books, books that might be on a reading list for a seminary course, for a bachelor's or master's degree in theology or for biblical studies, or simply books that have caught your eye on a bookshelf in a shop somewhere or maybe in your own pastor's library. Today, I want us to talk about my favourite commentaries on the biblical book of Colossians. If you like what I have to say, please give us a thumbs up on YouTube. Also, please subscribe and click on the bell if you haven't done already. It just helps promote the channel and helps us get out there to as many people as possible. Ultimately, you are a niche audience and I am very pleased to serve you. But as, a, as we want to support those people who are studying or, or are just students in the home or students in their church, uh, then please help us get that message out uh, by subscribing. Leave a comment if you've got anything to say below and I'll do my best to get back to you. So, Colossians it is. Now, these comments are my own and I may have missed out a commentary that you have. That's because my library is not infinite, uh, but I do try. And uh, I'd like to start today with a book, the sort of book that I often mention, which is the New Testament Theology series from Cambridge, which this one is called The Theology of the Later Pauline Epistles. And it's by Andrew T. Lincoln and A.J. Wedderburn. And the section on Colossians is by A.J.M. Wedderburn. 71 pages. It was written in 1996. And it deals largely with the theology of the book. It also talks a little bit about its place in the New Testament. And it does talk very realistically and very helpfully about Colossians continuing uh, influence today. This is a good pre-reader. If you're going to study uh, the book of Colossians, this is the sort of thing I advise as a as a starting point. It, it's always good and the whole series are absolutely excellent. Interpretation is not always my favourite uh, series. This one is by Ralph Martin and I, I always like reading Ralph Martin. I find him both accessible and learned. I, uh, I like what he has to say. This book was written in 1991. So whereas it's good if you're a pastor preparing a sermon, it's, it's good if you're studying to lead a Bible group in your church, it's good if you're just studying at home, it isn't good if you are quoting in an academic essay because it's over 30 years old. But it is still interesting to read. A bit thin detail because there's only 51 pages in this book that are about Colossians. The book covers Ephesians and Philemon as well. And it has a lot more on Ephesians, to be fair. But great style, a great what Ralph Martin thinking. And I, I can't dismiss it just because of its age. This book is from the Reading the New Testament series, which is uh, described as a literary and theological commentary. So this doesn't just deal with the verse-by-verse -verse commentary. It also deals with the overarching theology of the book. This is written by someone called Bonnie Thurston. I have not previously been familiar with her work. But what I would say is uh, the 73 pages in this that are given to Colossians, because like the previous one, it's Colossians, Ephesians, uh, but this also includes two Thessalonians. Uh, it was written in 2007. It's it's more big picture than verse by verse. And it, the sad thing, I have to say, which is not uncommon for this series, is that it has no substantive bibliography. But it does have some good things to say, so not to be totally dismissed. Brian Walsh and Sylvia Kiesmatt wrote this Colossians Remixed in 2004. I think I've probably had it since it came out. It's 256 pages. It got rave reviews when it was launched. I mean, it's got endorsements from N.T. Wright, Walter Brueggemann, 
uh, J. Richard Middleton, Andrew T. Lincoln, Frank Thielman. There's some really good names listed on the back, all praising this book. I felt it gave a very different perspective. It's not written in the style of a standard academic commentary. Uh, in fact, it would probably suit people who are not used to reading commentaries more. But it is, it is trying to understand Colossians in a postmodern culture like we live in today. Like I say, it's highly thought of, but it's not traditional in its layout and design. And I have to say, I'd been a little disappointed with it, but it's there. Now, Charles Talbot, uh, who's uh, quite a prolific writer, wrote the, the Pedia commentary on Ephesians and Colossians in 2007. 72 pages of it are devoted to Colossians. It's clearly still not a highly detailed work because of its only 72 pages, but it does have a generous bibliography. You can find out a lot more for your reading list just by consulting this commentary. It also has an excellent index of ancient sources and a substantive subject index. So this, is, this has been well thought out. It's an academic commentary. I quite like it, actually. A well done. It would be unethical for me to not mention this, uh, this book, which I have taken away from the door to my office where it was wedging it open. This is the New Interpreter's Bible Commentary. It wasn't really. It's just just my effort to try and bring some hilarity to the video. But the, the truth is, this is a really big, heavy book. It was published in 2015. It, it, it contains commentaries on Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1 and 2 Peter, 1 and 2 and 3 John, Jude and Revelation. <sighs> And the hundred pages that it gives to Colossians are very good pages written by Andrew T. Lincoln, who again is a prolific commentator, great guy. This cost me £63, but for the amount of commentary you get on the range of books, this probably ought to be most people's first purchase. You've got most of the New Testament after the Gospels and Acts, really. You haven't got Corinthians or Romans, but you know, you've pretty well got the rest of it. It's a, an excellent commentary, but the section on Colossians is a hundred pages of sterling stuff. I thoroughly endorse that one. This one is a, normally a very safe one. It's the Abingdon New Testament commentary. Uh, it's by David Hay, and it is this is excellent. Written in 2000, 182 pages on Colossians. A lot more detail, very gentle approach, academic but accessible, easy to read, to be frank. This is the sort of book which you can sit down and read over a couple of evenings and, and get an awful lot from it. I, I think that is a very good buy. And the Colossians and Philemon offering by Michael Bird in the new Covenant commentary series uh, from Cascade Books. This is typical Michael Bird, Michael Bird at his best. 177 pages, published in 2009. Only 14 of those pages are on Philemon, so the rest is Colossians. And what can I say? It's great. A very, very good commentary by a world-renowned author and commentator. You can see I've got quite a lot of commentaries on, on, on Colossians. This one is the NIVAC. It's by David Garland. Uh, David Garland is someone who you, you really can't knock. He is an extremely prolific author. Very well read, very well, um, com very good communicator. He has a lot to say. The New International Version Application Commentary, uh, the clue is in the title. It's very focused on applications from the text. So you won't get quite as much background or quite as much detail, but you will get a lot of application. This is great for preachers, great for people who are struggling to come up with ideas. 1998, it was published. 
390 pages, 292 of them are on Colossians, the rest is on Philemon. You can only say Garland is good. One book here that I've had quite a long while is my 1971 edition of the Hermeneia commentary on Colossians. This is typical for Hermeneia. It's technical. The layout is, is quite brilliant. Uh, it's easy to find your way around. Uh, this is the sort of commentary where it's helpful if you have a basic knowledge of Greek, but it's full of detail. I don't think that it's amongst my best commentaries, but it is a very worthwhile commentary. And uh, I think if you are trying to uh, do, write a technical essay on the book, submitting something to a university, this is definitely worth reading in the background, but its age now makes it to be not such a hot prospect. So it's, it's one to be considered. Uh, a lot of the Hermeneo products now are in this age category, but this is written by Edward Lose, L-O-H-S-E, and uh, I still think it has something on offer. Now we're getting on to the crux of the books that I really do consider very highly indeed. The Zondervan Exegetical Commentary on the New Testament. This is written by David Powell. It was published in 2012. It's got 462 pages, but that includes Philemon. And there are quite, it's quite a lot of detail on Philemon as well. But this is a brilliant commentary. Like the others in the range, it's got great layout. It's very clear. There's been no failure here to make this readable, accessible, to help you be able to find your way around it. I think it's a great offering. Whereas I would say there's nothing particularly about this that makes it outstanding from the others it's competing with but it's solid, it's conservative, it's a very, very good commentary. And if you found this at an affordable price, uh, you shouldn't hesitate. Uh, it's a good book. This is the Word Biblical Commentary by Peter O'Brien. Peter O'Brien, you are allowed to sound the red alert siren now, because a lot of Peter O'Brien's books have been withdrawn and minced because of plagiarism issues, which um, I don't think were ever intentional, but it's the way it is. But I don't think this one was withdrawn. It was published in 1982, 328 pages. Again, it's Colossians and Philemon. Uh, but this is O'Brien at his best. It's great to read, great to take as a background. Just don't quote it in a university or Bible college essay in case. And of course it is 1982, which really does take you well out of the 30 year rule. So it's a good background reading, not to be ignored. And I'm sure that Word will be replacing this fairly soon because there's a whole new wave of commentaries coming from Zondervan under the Word Biblical Commentary uh, title range. So still, still worthwhile. Now we're on to my top five, and these five, I think, are absolutely brilliant. This was published in 2019, 201 pages are given to Colossians. This is the New Beacon Bible Commentary on Ephesians, Colossians and Philemon, uh, which means it's uh, coming from a Wesleyan tradition in the USA. I find this whole range to be absolutely excellent. These are very accessible, yet ac truly academic. Great, absolutely great. And Colossians on this is absolutely excellent. This has one of the best bibliographies on Colossians that you're going to find, and it's breathtaking in its, in its scope and accessibility. I really, really do like this. I, it's written by Robert W. Smith, by the way, uh, the section on Colossians. The, the book has got three authors because each book that it covers has got a separate author. But absolutely brilliant uh, commentary. 
Uh, you can't go wrong with this. And I mean, these typically sell for less than thirty pounds in UK money, and that is uh, a, a great commentary, great deal of depth on three books for for that amount of money. Okay, top four. The Letter to the Colossians by the New International Commentary on the New Testament. This is written by Scott McKnight under the general editorship of Joel Green. This is Scott McKnight at his best. And it, let's face it, he is a great author. It's academic. It's detailed. It's 442 pages just on Colossians. And it's published in 2018, which makes it well in date for a long, long time. It's one of the most current, most up-to-date commentaries you're going to get on Colossians. Absolutely brilliant. If you want to wade into the waters of Colossians, you could have very little entry point greater than this. You can bathe in Colossians for days. You can get lost in the text. This is a really welcoming, brilliant academic commentary which will help you whatever your level of study. I commend it to you. My top three. Who can believe a top three that doesn't include the NICNT? Well, there you go. This is a book by Ben Witherington III. It's called The Letters to Philemon, the Colossians and the Ephesians, a socio-rhetorical commentary on the captivity epistles. It was published in 2007. It's got 382 pages. It has got a great interest in bibliography that lists lots of journal articles. Look for that in bibliographies. It's great. It opens up your studies and it lets you know that the author has been reading on the cutting edge of research. It, it gives a broad picture, it, it paints a huge canvas, but it, it gives great clarity as well. This book is recommended by Scott McKnight, remember the last one, by Daryl Bock, by Craig Evans, and a number of other excellent authors Ben Witherington is just really hard to fault. He really is. And this is one of the volumes that covers the whole of the New Testament now. Witherington has a commentary on every book in the New Testament and has got a few on the old now. He has so much to offer. This is a truly brilliant book. I wouldn't want to be without it. Now, the next one is one I wouldn't want to be without. And it's 1996 uh, publication, which is starting to bring it close to the line. But it's 388 pages are written by James D.G. Dunn, one of my favourite authors of all time. This is the New International Greek Testament Commentary, which makes it one of the true technical commentaries. Um, it takes everything from the Greek and pours it down the page. And yet, Dunn has the ability to still make the text accessible. Dunn is bringing out hidden truths and deep depths of the book without making it indelible to anyone that doesn't know the secret code that we call Greek. Yes, it will help you if you have basic New Testament Greek, but it, it, it shouldn't put you off from the book. This book will bring out loads for you that you hadn't seen before. It's a really, really great book. And in two years' time, when this is 30 years old, I just hope uh, that they uh, start to bring out something else. But of course, James Dunn is now the late James Dunn, but this is purely legacy on the plate. An absolutely excellent commentary. If you can get a copy, get a copy. It's truly brilliant. And now, da, 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 my top choice. This is a brand that you probably have never seen me given the top choice position to before. It's the Baker Exegetical Commentary on the New Testament. 
and it's by G.K. Beale. Beale is just a star. He is a star in the firmament. He is a great author, writer, commentator. He has a fabulous mind. He sees things that are not always obvious. He puts them over in sentences which are incredibly concise and precise and helpful to us all. This was published in 2019. It's 514 pages, 90 of which are on Philemon. So that's what, 424 pages on Colossians. It is truly a masterpiece. I have tried any way I could to find a reason why I could say to you there was another book in my library that was first choice, but I can't come up with a reason. This is my first choice for Colossians, a truly brilliant commentary. You will get so much detail in this. You will get so much from it. And if you're just taking a few pages at a time, it will analyse those verses that you're looking at and really deliver them on a plate to you. This, again, is a truly academic commentary. I think that if there was only one that I had to grab on the Colossians when I was running out the office, it would probably be this. Probably will remain this for a while. A truly excellent one that I commend to you. Well, that's all I've really got to say about, you've seen my range of commentaries that I have on Colossians. If you've got anything out of this, please give us a thumbs up on YouTube. If you want to say anything back to us, please leave a comment below and make sure you're subscribed and clicked on the bell and tell all your friends about Pastor's Library. And until next time, all I've got to say to you is bye.